Good morning! Actually, I don't even think it's morning anymore. I think it's just afternoon, but I was planning on getting up at 7 today to work on the shipment that I showed you in that first little bit. Because Chris and my wife was at work for the whole week, doing stuff on campus or for work, and spending the night there. She's coming back today in like an hour or two, and my goal was gonna be to get that shipment done completely before she got home, but I slept in a lot, which I'm actually kinda happy about because I needed the sleep, for sure. Luckily, yesterday while filming the Day in My Life vlog, we were able to finish up the day by processing all of the Walmart inventory and at least putting it into inventory lab which is the software that I use to do all of my shipments but we still have left this stuff which is from a long time ago which I just got approved to sell it's hazmat items which is kind of crazy we can talk about that later in a second these were giving me a problem yesterday these toys and then we have all this Academy stuff a little bit from Ross TJ Maxx and Marshalls luckily buying all this stuff took less than 10 hours of sourcing and we've already spent about an hour on the shipment we're gonna track our time going throughout hopefully we can be done by 7 o'clock so I can go to the UPS store before they close and I just want to get it done as fast as possible to spend some time with Carissa so I'm gonna finish making that coffee and breakfast and then we can get started on processing the rest of this inventory and hopefully it's only one massive shipment that we have to send in rather than a bunch of tiny ones but we'll see coffee and tacos what a life as we get started Everything that I'm going to be using is going to be linked down in the description. So if you want to check it out, it would support the channel. But I also have some free trials for all the softwares that I have down there as well. Alrighty, we're fueled up 12.57 now. That means we got just under six hours until we have to be at UPS. We're going to do the next big store first, which is Academy. I spent like $1,800 there. I think a lot of it was higher prices though, so it might not be as many items as we're at Walmart. A lot of this stuff I spent less. These were like 88 cents each at, before tax. Organize first, then I'll show you how to put everything into Scottify too. Okay, wow. We got all the Academy stuff here and over here organized and ready to go. From here, you got a couple options. You can either start to catalog it or organize this stuff so that it's ready. Because I don't really have a lot of extra spaces and I have only these couple other things, I'm just gonna wait on those and actually put all the Academy stuff into Scottify too. Now, the ultimate goal with all of this is to get all of our items into Inventory Lab, this program here, so that we can get shipments from Amazon and ship it out that way. There are a couple ways you can do that. I prefer to use Scottify too. I tested the other way. You might prefer it, but I did not. So we're in Inventory Lab here. All we have to do is go to List, List and Prep, and then it'll pull up up the batch that we have now if you didn't have any open batches you just hit new batch and then it would pull up this page I'm blurring out my address and you can name it and put in all that information but I talked really in detail about that in my inventory lab video we already have all the Walmart stuff put in so I grabbed this guy it's just a fishing bait and what we could do is go up here put in the UPC code which would be the 75198 number and then when we search it it's gonna pull up the item so to add it to our batch we would select it and then we'd be able to come in, put the cost per unit, where we bought it from, and all of that. I did that with some Walmart items yesterday until I realized that that was just too big of a pain in the butt for a couple reasons. First, I don't know the cost of this offhand, and I could bring the receipts over with me, but I'm gonna bring them around the room and cross off items while I'm putting them into Scottify too. The other thing is, since I don't use a tax exempt certificate right now, I would have to calculate the sales tax on that because it doesn't automatically calculate it in here like it does for me in Scottify too. So we're gonna cancel that. And now we're gonna create a buy list in Scottify too for all of the Academy inventory. And like I said, I'm gonna use these receipts and take them around with me and cross off items so I can make sure that I get the correct prices. And then after our buy list is fully created, we can send it into Inventory Lab and add it to our batch. We'll just grab the same thing as our first example. Next up, I just have to find it on the receipts. What's really annoying about it is the receipts don't actually have the UPC code on them. They have the Academy SKU, so I have to look it up by the name. Okay, here it is. It says uh, Fat Albert Grub right there, $2.99 before tax. And I've actually recently changed how I'm dealing with tax on Scottify 2. When you're in Scottify 2 here, if you go over to the settings tab, you can set some defaults. So right now I have shipping rate defaulted to 50 cents per pound, sales tax 7 cents. 7%. The default sales tax in Orlando is 6.5%, but if I go a little bit north, it's 7%, and a little bit south, it's 7.5%. So even though most of my stuff is at 6.5%, I'm just going to put it at 7%. That way, I'm overestimating my cost, so it'll make my buying decisions a little more conservative, which is good. So the first step is going to be to come over here into this section, which is the buy list tab, and you can add a buy list here, except you also don't have to do that. All you have to do is search the item. Once it pulls up, why did I buy this? That's one of the other things that I'll often realize when I'm doing these shipments that sometimes maybe the price that was on this in the sticker didn't quite match up to what it actually rung out to be, which is really frustrating. So I think this might have said like $1.50 on the price tag, or maybe I just totally misread it, but obviously I'm not going to ship this in since you only get $3.59 back if you go to a higher price than what the buy box is right now. So we'll return this. But if I was to add it, you just hit add here, and then I'm going to create the buy list for Academy. Hit OK. And now we're going to put in our cost per unit is $2.99. We have one of them. That's what we're gonna list it at, because that's what I had chosen. It's a new condition. 
doesn't matter the purchase date to me. We're gonna change the supplier to Academy, okay? And then now that's in our buy list here. You can see the total cost to the buy list down here, $3.20. If we wanted to send that to my email, we could do that there. And that's what we'll end up doing after we put in all of the items, but I'm first gonna delete this item. We are definitely gonna return that guy. Hopefully there's not a lot of other items that I messed up on like that, but it's not a big deal. Just another trip to Academy, and we can go to one that we haven't been to so we can buy a lot more stuff. Right now it's 152, so we've been at it for just under an hour. Hopefully we can have all this stuff cataloged pretty soon after we catalog all of it, and I'll also do the Ross Marshalls and TJ Maxx. We'll send all that information over into Inventory Lab, and I'll show you what to do from there before we start labeling and delabeling things, but there's not a lot to delabel, which is really good today. I still have yet to do all this stuff down here, but Academy has been put into Scoutify. I don't have these. In there, I didn't see them on my receipts, but I know the prices, so I'm just gonna put them in at that normal price. What we have in Scoutify shows $1,537. I do have to return a couple more things that I accidentally picked up. And so with that, it should say about $1,548, so I'm about $10 off, which I think accounts for this, so I might've just missed it when I was doing everything on my receipts. So I'm just gonna add these real quick. All right, got that set. I did notice that there were a bunch of items that were either overcharged or undercharged, and I think that that accounts for a lot of it. For instance, there were 16 more of these in my receipts than I actually have, but the costs for everything overall line up, so I'm not too worried about it. So now in Scoutify, we have this buy list. All I'm gonna do is hit it, and then we're gonna go down to the bottom here and send it to my email. Oh no, not that. So we're just gonna go down to the bottom here, send it to my email, and I'm gonna archive it here so I don't have to worry about it as I'm doing the next couple of buy lists. And then the way that you add it into the shipment is logging in here to Inventory Lab, going back to List, List, and Prep. Then we're gonna click these three lines over here and we're gonna import the buy list. But first, I have to download it. So I'm just gonna go to my email, Inventory Labs, buy list over here is the label that I have. So we'll just click that. Download her up, back to there, import it. Now it's gonna upload into Inventory Lab. The thing to know too is, since I bought some of the same items at both Academy and Walmart, you can put them all together at this point, since it's all gonna be combined when you're actually labeling all of your items in Inventory Lab. We have some issues, which is just because we have to replenish these. I already have SKUs for them. It's not actually saying that they're removing it. What I just did there is, I saw that I had a couple old SKUs for an item and I didn't recognize either of them and neither of them had inventory. So I just deleted those and created a new one. I don't honestly know which item it was for, but that way I don't have to worry about finding out which one it was. I can just delete it and move on. These ones have duplicates because we bought them at Walmart and at Academy. So we still have four issues left, which are all gonna be duplicates. Make sure that we add all of those. There's gonna be so many items. Next, Amazon's gonna validate it. So we send it to them. It did take us a little bit. It's 428 now, but a lot of that's because Chris got home and we just spent some time together. So we're probably not actually gonna finish up this shipment today because the labeling alone will probably take an hour or two but that is no problem at all so Amazon has validated everything so we can add it to the batch let's see how much profit we're at now before we add the last couple things we were at just over $600 in profit and just over 750 in buy cost so I'm hoping that our difference in profit and buy cost stays around $150 which would mean that we're at 100% ROI from Academy I don't quite think it'll be there though probably closer to like 80% maybe 70 so we're definitely not as profitable as I hoped but that's still really good profit. We spent $1,560 and we added $1,280 of profit, which I think is right around 80%. Yeah, 82% ROI, which is really good because those are mostly replenishments and I know that they're gonna sell. So not as profitable as I necessarily would want, but that total net profit right there that we're sending in is about what I need to make in a month period. And since this is only from three days of work, that's pretty decent. Let's finish it up. We'll add those toys from Walmart that were being difficult yesterday. And then I'll try to add these hazmat items, which I think I just got approved to sell it. All right, not even five, we got everything organized in my phone at least there was one other thing that i'm gonna have to return which stinks because i was excited to try it out these dog treats which i talked about in the video that i picked up at the very end i think they, they could be a good buy but when i initially picked them up this wasn't on the listing amazon so right now amazon's now on the listing for nine dollars and 67 cents so i'd only return like a quarter after taxes and that would be if amazon gave me any of the buy box so we're just gonna return those to tj maxx and Maybe eventually if they get off the listing and I see them again, I'll pick them up. I'm not trying to compete with Amazon in a category that I've never competed with anybody in before. I did also try to add all of this stuff. The hazmat stuff wouldn't add an inventory lab. I might try to make a separate shipment for this in Amazon, but I'm honestly just not gonna worry about that today. It's been sitting in my house for a couple months. A couple more days isn't gonna hurt it. And then these toys, for whatever reason, even though I have some of the same ones from Walmart that are just a different color, these won't add either through my phone or through inventory lab. And they gave me an error code, so I reached out to Inventory Lab support just to see what's up with that. 
So these ones will have to wait till next shipment. I'm just quickly gonna send over this last little bit into inventory lab and we'll see what our totals are. Adding it to the batch. Not amazing return on investment. It's right around 80%, which is good enough because this isn't new items, it's replenishables. And in terms of whatever I'm guessing return on investment, like the times that I'm sending in shipments, it's always closer to accurate on stuff that's replenishments because I've sold that before and I know for sure rather than new items because those can get repriced a lot. The next step is just to hit review batch in inventory lab and that is gonna take us to this page which I don't care about. So we'll hit submit. It was just a summary page. We'll sync it with Amazon and it's gonna spit out a shipment or two shipments or three, however many. And uh, then we can accept it and start working on delabeling and labeling. Luckily, I think there's only like 15 things to delabel, which is amazing. All right, so it spit out four shipments for us. I know we can at least get rid of one. So I'll tell you how to do that in a second, but let's look through these shipments real quick. We have a lot of items, like over 800 items, which I think is the most items. This first one, as you can see, it's no label shipments. On inventory lab, every time that I have stuff that is manufacturer label, meaning I don't have to put a label on it myself versus seller label where I put an Amazon label over everything. It splits those shipments between things that are just manufacturer barcodes and things that are Amazon barcodes. I prefer to do Amazon barcodes. So what we're gonna do in order to at least get rid of this shipment is go back. We're gonna copy this ASIN down here and delete that SKU and create a new one because I have it set in inventory labs for all new SKUs to be Amazon labels rather than manufacturer. I'm interested to see if there's any specific reason that these other shipments are split. I do oftentimes have this one going to Charlotte and this one going to Richmond. Sometimes those will split up for me. I have never sent anything here though. And it looks like it's not for any specific reason. Maybe Amazon just has low stock of these things at those places. So they want me to send it there directly. But what we're gonna do is decline these shipments and go back, hit yes, go back to list and prep. Then I'm just gonna find control F that ASIN and we're gonna delete it. I have six of them. I can remember how much I bought it for. So we're gonna delete that. Now we're just gonna search for that ASIN, select it, and then we're gonna delete the SKU and create a new one. Add to the batch. Now we're gonna do the same exact thing. Review batch, submit, sync again. And it should give us fewer shipments. Yep, look at that. Now we're just down to the two shipments. We can do the 95 unit shipment first and then the one for 732 units. That way we can at least box one shipment up today, but we're gonna accept those shipments by coming back in here and hitting create and create, and we're gonna create both of those. And then we're just gonna go to enter box contents on this, except we're kind of done in inventory lab for this second. We're gonna have to head over into seller central and under inventory manage FBA shipments, it's gonna pull up all of our shipments. And now since we just created those two in inventory lab, it's already, even though it's like a couple seconds, been created in Amazon. So since we're gonna do the smaller shipment first, we're gonna open that one up. Then we're gonna scroll down to where it says review shipment contents. Right here, it's the first thing, and we'll hit review and modify units. And then we're gonna be able to print out all of our labels, which is gonna be 95 labels, and it just downloads down there. You wouldn't have to worry about that if you had a thermal printer. It would have already printed for you when you hooked it up with Inventory Lab and put the units in. And that's something I'll be getting hopefully for the next for the next shipment or the shipment after that. But currently I'm still using Avery labels. I do hope that I have enough. I'm gonna need 30 sheets. But for this shipment, we're gonna need three sheets plus an extra page that has five on it. So I'll always keep these old ones because this one, I could just flip it around and then I can move these five labels from the bottom here up to the top. Load it up into the printer down here. Now the way that I prefer to do it just to keep my mind straight is to just print out these 95 labels first and then I'll print out the rest of the labels later. That way, I can just do this first shipment first and get it out of the way and not have to worry about splitting up the shipment after labeling all the items. I've labeled everything first in the past. If you're not using these 30 up labels, you're already gonna have all your labels, so might as well label everything first and then split it up into the shipments if you have a thermal printer. But this way too, when I do the smaller shipment, I'll take stickers off as I go because I don't know how many items I need to take stickers off for this shipment. And then after this one, I'll take all the rest of the stickers off because I know everything else is going into one big shipment. So I'm gonna label these up and put everything aside that needs some extra prep and we can talk through that and then we'll have one shipment done hopefully within the next hour. Got everything for the shipment labeled up except for four or five items. That's because these ones still have stuff that we need to prep them to do. We're gonna take labels off the old way that I used to do it before I got smart and just to show you kind of what the difference looks like because Carissa's taking a nap right now after her long week. Nowadays I use a hair dryer as a heat source but that's pretty loud. So we have to worry about for this isn't, we don't even have any prep that we technically need to do because Amazon will tell you the necessary prep that you need to do for it. And this one, as you can see at the top here, it says prep type, not applicable. But I'm still gonna throw this in a poly bag because when I opened up the Academy bag after sitting for a day, I noticed that these had released some of the scent that's in the bait. So I'd rather just make it easier on my shipment and just put these in a poly bag. These four all have stickers that need to be taken off. The Ross stickers, the Walmart stickers. The Walmart stickers are way easier than the Ross ones. But if you don't have a heat source or don't want to use one, I'll show you how to take those stickers off. This is the majority of the stuff that I use when sending in shipments. It consists of Goo Gone, which is how we're gonna take all the labels off. Also gonna use a Scotty peeler, which I used to never use, but it saved my nails so much. Much, and then the poly bags, obviously. Normally, I just use Goo Gone to take off the residue after taking off the sticker using some heat, 
but you can just use it and let it sit and it'll get the sticker off itself. So I'm just gonna squirt it on there real quick. Rub it around a little with my finger. Make sure I get the thing completely saturated. Then if this sits for a couple minutes, the goo gone will eat at the glue instead of the heat and then you'll be able to take the sticker off. I'm not sure how much these stickers are stuck onto here. A lot of times it depends on what type of cardboard this is, whether you could just take it off directly or if you need to use any goo gone. This one looks like it's coming up pretty easily. And definitely be careful because if you rip any of the packaging, then you're not gonna be able to send it in new or at least I wouldn't recommend it. So as we can see here, there's still definitely some residue on there. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, right there, all that residue. And so with that, honestly, because I have some extra down here, I'm just gonna take it off of there and put it on that because that will take off the adhesion there. We can do the same thing with all these other ones. And for these Hot Wheels, this is the first time I've ever shipped in toys, actually. I was at Walmart on clearance and I didn't even know that I was ungated in them, and then I just looked them up to see if they would be profitable, and then to request for ungating again, because I always do that, and it just showed up that I was able to sell them. Now we got some toys, which is great, moving into Q4. This is coming off a lot easier than I thought it would have. One thing to be careful about with this Goo Gone, it didn't get too bad on this one, but if you just squirt it straight on there, if there's any sort of like cut, in the paint that is on the cardboard, or whatever they use to go over the cardboard, it'll leave this little line right here, which is a little bit annoying. You can definitely tell right there that there's a line. It's not that big of a deal on this, but if you let it sit for a long time, that can definitely spread. So just be careful with that. If you take stuff off with a heat gun or with a hairdryer instead, normally these Walmart stickers will just come straight off and they don't even leave any residue. All right, now these ones don't have any more residue. We'll be able to label them up. Let's see if this is ready to come off yet. Oh yeah, there we go. Definitely able to come off. This is a pretty thick plastic, so I'm really comfortable having left that much goo gun on there, but thinner plastics, the goo gun will even start to eat away at that. So just be careful with how much you put on so you don't damage packaging, because I did damage some packaging when I first started. All right, just like that, that's gonna come off complete. And just take the rest of the goo gun and rub off that residue that's still on there, because it will leave some residue, and it might take a pass or two to get that off. Beautiful, that's all done now. One thing that I don't like about these brushes is the fact that this, just stays open, whether you zip it or you zip it back up, it'll close for a second. You can open it pretty easily. Because of that, I'll throw these in a poly bags, and that kind of happens because Ross puts a hole right here so that they can put in their little plastic piece. I don't know why they do that, it's pretty dumb. Since it's open, just count to make sure you still have the 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, 12. When it's already been labeled, you're gonna have a warning label on the outside of your poly bags, or at least you need to have a warning label if the opening is five inches or more. So I make sure that the label goes on the side that doesn't have that warning label. Yeah, this is gonna be one where we're gonna go ahead and throw it on like that and double it over. Make sure that all this residue's off. It is a lot harder when you just use the Goo Gone to get all the residue off completely. I'll fold this guy back. Since it's so tight, I'm gonna put the label on the outside of this one. Put that right there. Perfect. All right, so these are all the items in the shipment right here. Unfortunately, it would fit all in this box if it wasn't for this one thing, which is just too long. So we're gonna grab a different box. This one is definitely too big, but I think it's long enough. So we'll go ahead and use it and cut down what we don't need. In this shipment, everything's fitting in one box, no problem. So we won't have to worry about coming back here into inventory labs and adding new boxes. But we will have to do that for the second shipment. All right, so the unfortunate thing is this is so much longer than everything else. So I'm just gonna throw this in around here so that the bottom is padded. And then there's a couple options for filling that up. The lighter way to do it is probably to use these little hair pillows. And since I have a bunch of them, that's what I'm gonna do today. We just got so many for buying a bunch of stuff on Amazon for our van. But normally what I'll actually end up doing is taking cardboard. And this is written on because we used it for the live stream yesterday. And because it's so cheap, since you have a lot of boxes that get broken down potentially, especially because I have more cardboard than other things, I'll just kind of fold it up into like an accordion style. That way, It'll be a little more compact, but it can expand to the width of something. Then if I throw it down in here, then it can expand to fill little gaps. And that'll be sturdy enough that it shouldn't be an issue. And then it'll make sure that your stuff doesn't move around. But since we have all this, we'll throw that in as well. And then even though there's not a lot of room left in here, I'm still gonna cut it down a little bit just to make sure I compact it as much as I possibly can so that stuff doesn't move. There are some different ideas about whether or not you should tape it up yet. I personally will. But some people might not want to until they finish everything. I just know that I can open this back up if I did something wrong, and that's no problem. That also means that I'm not gonna actually be measuring anything yet or weighing it because I don't wanna take it to UPS yet just in case I did mess something up. And I'll be able to find out if I did or not when I do my next shipment, which is what we're moving on to now. But the first step to finishing it out here in Inventory Lab is I'm just gonna select all these units, sign it to a box, Box one, because that's the only box that we needed. And now everything's in that box. And if we wanted to, we can transmit the boxes. But I haven't waited yet, so we won't worry about that. Next up, we have 732 units. Same process of going into Seller Central, manage FBA shipments, review and modify units. This one might actually give us a challenge. Let's see, here we are again. We'll go back to work on shipment. Review and modify units. Yes, so this one did. If you notice, we have 732 units, 
but it's only giving us 718 labels. That's because when you have a shipment that's pretty big, sometimes if you're doing labels this way, you have to go to a page two. And the second page will have the rest of the 14 labels. I don't know, maybe there's a maximum number of SKUs that you can print the labels for on any one page, but we'll just print both those pages out real quick. And I'm gonna do the same thing since I don't have very many things to delabel. I'm gonna label everything that's a lie. What we're gonna end up doing because of something I'll show you in inventory lab is taking all of the labels off first. Since there's not a lot, we're just gonna use the same method what we did before so that Carissa can stay asleep. You can watch any of my other shipment videos if you wanna learn the faster way to do it and the way that I think is more efficient. But let's print that up and then we'll take all of the labels off. Then we'll take the time to actually go through every single unit, label all the units up. And there's something that we can do in inventory lab to make it a little bit faster. Everything has been polybagged that needs to be polybagged. Most clothes or socks will need to be polybagged. Everything else has been delabeled. I didn't put a polybag around this moleskin because it's in really good condition, the shrink wrap is. So here's the trick that I found out a little bit ago if you're using inventory lab, which I do think makes your life a lot easier. So in inventory lab, I honestly don't know how the default way that your items are gonna be ordered is determined. But when you're printing everything off of Amazon, these are in order of the SKU. When we change this to SKU, the first one when we change it is now the same thing. The reason this makes your life really easy is when you're in inventory lab, you have to assign extra boxes. Especially if you have this much inventory, you have to send it in multiple boxes so you don't go overweight or oversized. I used to take my laptop with me and I would check off everything that I was putting into each box as I did it, but that obviously took extra time to do. So now that I figured out if you just order it by SKU, it'll match up with what's in your labeling sheets. I can just label straight down the line, which is why I polybagged everything so that I could put the label on the outside of them and prepped it all first. And then when I fill up a box, I can just come back in here and check off everything that I need to and then assign it to that same box and then create the second box in inventory lab. We obviously just missed our window for UPS. So we're gonna be taking this tomorrow, but let's still see if we can finish packing it up within the next hour or two. Hopefully by nine o'clock, everything will be good to go. I've never labeled 700 plus items. So having 27 sheets is quite daunting. Let's go ahead and finish up these shipments because unfortunately I got an email when I was in the middle of the shipment. I'm actually kind of grateful for it and I think it tells me the reason why that toy wasn't showing up for me in inventory lab. So it said action required, important information about your product listings. And then it shows two ASINs and SKUs and saying that I need to put in compliance documents. I looked at the SKU, copied it, went back into Seller Central, managed inventory, searched it, and it says I have none available obviously because it's the shipment that I have, but it's this item right here. Some of those big Hot Wheel toys that I have and it's asking for some compliance documents and I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm going to take it out of my shipment but one of them was in this box so we're going to have to take that out. I already deleted all the other ones from the main shipment. We'll just return them so I don't have to worry about it. That is why even though I could have taken this to UPS today I decided not to. You always got to be ready for the unexpected with it. I did just notice that these came and had barcodes on the sides of them so just make sure that before you ship anything all the barcodes are crossed out, so only the ones that you have can be scanned. Just throw this guy over here into the big return pile. And back on inventory lab. In this shipment, I'm just gonna find that unit. So all we have to do is go over here to this and delete it. You can delete up to, I think, 5% of your shipment or up to six units of any single SKU. But now that that's all set, in both of the shipments, we can just transmit all the boxes to Seller Central. And with the measurements of the boxes, and I already weighed them, the weight is the most important thing as long as they're not over 25 inches on any side. The first box was 48 pounds. Actually, both of them were 48 because I had to take something out of one box and put it into another because I was just over 50 pounds. And then the weight on the last one was just over 10 pounds, so we'll say 11. And you need to put in all the dimensions. And I'm just going to approximate because I know that I'm not over the dimensions on anything. And this is normally what it was. Submit that, and that's going to send all that over into Seller Central. Just past 11 now, 11.15. And we'll be able to actually take a look at the totals from this shipment compared to the amount of time that we spent working on it and break that down right after we print out the labels. So in Inventory Labs, once you see that little thing, you can head straight back over into Seller Central, manage, ooh, first actually, let's delete these listings. We're gonna go to any thing that says car in it, and then we got these two right here, and then the last one it wasn't adding, so we won't have to worry about it. Action on these two, we'll just delete the products and listings. That way we shouldn't really have to worry about those compliance documents, because we won't have listings for it anymore, and we won't have ever had any inventory. So I'm grateful that I caught that before I ended up shipping these out and had to get them sent back to me. Just saves me like 50 cents, because it costs a quarter for each of them to get shipped back. Perfect, those are done. Inventory, manage FBA shipments down here. Work on the shipment. And our information has already been sent, including the size of all the boxes. So down in shipping charges, we're gonna calculate our total charges should be around 100 pounds. Oh, actually 96, exactly, perfect. Agree to the charges. 
It's just over 25 cents per pound. I estimate for 50 cents because smaller shipments are normally a little more expensive. That way I'm also overestimating my fees, which is always better for me. Because that means best case scenario, I'll be choosing items that'll give me more profit because I've overestimated fees. For instance, the shipping on this one that's 11 pounds was $15.56. So the average comes out to be 39 cents per pound, $42 divided by 107 pounds. I guess that's because this one is going to Sacramento, California. I didn't realize what SMF stood for, but I guess they're having a shortage of inventory out there. That sucks. We're gonna ship them out tomorrow, which is Saturday. I'm just gonna print labels, not only the UPS label, but also the Amazon label. And I'm just gonna stick them on the whole sheet right onto the box, making sure that it doesn't cross any of the seams so that they can still open the box. Oh shoot. Guess you just wasted two pages of labels. Guess we can still use some of the bottom ones, but that's a pain. Now I gotta reprint that. Last step is on Seller Central. You just gotta scroll to complete shipment after you've printed out the labels. And I'll label these up and we can talk to the profit numbers. Labeled up. So we actually ended up doing pretty decent and this kind of is turning out if you watch one of my other recent videos to be my hourly rate on average time spent total of sourcing time the first day that we went out in this sourcing vlog we spent seven hours and then my day of the life of a professional reseller vlog we did three more hours ish both of those were actually less time but i want to be a little more conservative and so we're just going to put 10 hours total uh spent sourcing plus seven and a half hours doing our shipment today now we started around one finished at 11 30 but i took around three hours, a little bit more in breaks to eat food, hang out with Carissa, and just to give myself some time off my feet. So total time worked was 17 and a half hours over a three day period. The shipment details are also pretty interesting. We sent 105 total SKUs or different items, majority of those being replenishments, which is really good for me. Total of 823 units with a cost of $2,416.47. So that's kind of crazy that I was able to spend that much in only 10 hours of the time. I'm normally averaging like 50 to $75 an hour on like a good week that I'm sourcing. And then the sales value total is $8,041.83. So if everything was to be bought at the current price, that's how much people would spend on it. But after all Amazon fees and after paying off this $2,400, I get that question a lot. This net profit number does include paying off my inventory. The net profit, would be $1,966.60. So I put potential profit here or P profit because obviously things can change. I have a lot of items that I put at lower prices than I think I might get just because that's what they were at now and my repricer is already gonna be working on that. And then some other items will sell for lower because it'll be repriced down but potentially right around $2,000 for a return on investment of only 81.38%. Normally I try to stay over 100%, but for being the majority of replenishments, knowing that I'm gonna sell them and repricing a little bit more aggressively so that I can get that money back faster, it's gonna be really good. So that leaves us with an hourly rate of right around $116.37 per hour. All hours worked, maybe excluding a little bit of repricing, but we can just figure that time into the time that I overestimated for sourcing. If you're wondering what to do with that kind of money, watch this video to figure out numbers in your business. If you wanna see how we actually bought all this inventory, watch this video or this video, which show all the inventory being purchased except for a couple of bags that I talked about. Peace.